uh, this DVD will concentrate on foot and ankle. Uh, it's very important, particularly with the foot and ankle, to know whether the uh, presenting complaint is an isolated one or part of a more generalized complaint, such as gout, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, diabetes. Very important to take a full detailed history, uh, particularly including any neurological complaints as problems with the spine often present with neurological uh, issues in the foot. Change in uh, position of the foot uh, is also uh, something that uh, very often happens, particularly if someone has uh, nerve dysfunction uh, or tendon dysfunction. With the foot, generally the pain is localized to exactly where the problem is. Uh, so this can be quite, uh, quite good at pointing you to the, the issue. Uh, it's also uh, important to understand what problems patients are having with either their job or their social life. And it may be causing problems with uh, even wearing simple footwear. Uh, we'll now move on to examination of the foot and ankle. Examination of the foot starts uh, first by inspecting a patient after they've been fully exposed uh, to at least above the knee. Looking from the front, we're looking for uh, any obvious abnormality of the toes, either on the hallux, uh, quite often with the hallux valgus deformity here, uh, of the lesser toes, whether that be a mallet deformity uh, a hammer toe deformity or claw deformity. Also, we're looking at the arch, medial longitudinal arch in here and on both sides. And if there is any flattening of the arch by uh, undertaking a jacks test or a windlass test by pulling the big toe up, this reconstitutes the arch. Can you just like to turn sideways towards me, please? Um, we can do that again from the side, pulling this, and you can see that the arch reconstitutes. The arch can either be normal, uh, as in this case, or it can be a flattened arch, which would be pes planus, or a cavus uh, arch where it's, uh, the arch is increased. Any abnormality, particularly a cavus abnormality uh, of the arch, should uh, alert one to the possibility of a neurological problem, and a full neurological assessment, including assessment of the back, should be un undertaken at that point. Would you like to turn and face the wall for me, please? Looking from behind, uh, a couple of things to note. Uh, one, the Achilles tendon coming down here uh, should be the same size on both sides. Any thickening uh, could signify an abnormality. There is a five degree valgus angulation on the heel normally. And the other thing to look out for is a too many toes sign, uh, suggestive uh, if there are more than two toes visible from the side, sorry, from behind, uh, which is suggestive of a uh, fat, flat foot or pes planus. If you ask your patient to stand up on their tiptoes, you'll note that the uh, Achilles pulls the heel in and the valgus deformity becomes a varus deformity and also that the arch on the inside of the foot uh, reconstitutes quite nicely. Pop yourself back down. Another thing to check here is the muscle bulk on the calves, uh, which can be uh, problematic uh, and altered in patients who have a, 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 an HMSN1 or Charcot-Marie tooth type problem again. That should prompt uh, one to look at the back. Having looked with the patient stood, we then want to walk the patient. So if you could just turn around for me please. And walk backwards and forwards until I ask you to stop. Looking for the, uh, which part of the foot has the, uh, makes the initial contact. Looking for the foot progression angle uh, and looking for any asymmetry. The foot progression angle is the angle that the foot makes with an imaginary line drawn uh, in a straight line between the legs. Thank you. Having checked somebody's walking, both from in front and from the side, uh, we should also check their footwear to make sure there's no uh, abnormal wear pattern on it uh, or inserts uh, which have been supplied to balance out a, an abnormality in the foot. Having done that, we will pr progress to the couch to examine the foot uh, closer. Having examined the uh, patient's foot standing, it's important to examine it uh, fully uh, with them uh, sitting in a comfortable position uh, with either yourself sitting or kneeling next to the patient. First thing to do is to check the alignment of the foot, making sure this is, uh, there's no rotatory element. Having done that, you need to go back and inspect the entirety of the foot properly. So the bits that we were unable to see where the patient was standing up, particularly look around the heel looking for any calluses uh, over the uh, first metatarsal head and the fifth metatarsal head. They're the usual places, although there may be callus forming under uh, any of the, the lesser toes, which would fit with metatarsalgia. Plantar fasciitis is usually seen around this area just here, and that's point-specific tenderness. 
uh, in that area. Having inspected the sole of the foot, we also need to inspect uh, between each of the toes to make sure there are no uh, abnormalities there. There could be uh, either fungal infections or uh, occasionally it has been found that melanomas to exist in these places. Having inspected the foot fully, uh, we want to move on to palpation. We need to palpate each part of the foot. There are quite a few bones and bits of soft tissue around the foot, so it's important that you have a, a, an ordered sequence for it. I like to start uh, at the back and work forward. You can start at the front and work back. doesn't really make much difference. We start with the ankle joint by feeling down the medial malleolus. And then on the lateral side, on the lateral malleolus. Coming into the medial ligament, the, the uh, deltoid ligament on the inside. And then running round, feeling the ulnar calcis at the back, the talus and the tail and neck, which we can pinch between the fingers just in front of the uh, ankle joint itself. On the lateral side, which is uh, the ligaments that are most often damaged, uh, we feel there's the three ligaments running around uh, in front of the uh, lateral malleolus, the anterior talar fibular ligament being the most commonly injured, the posterior talar fibular ligament, and the calcaneal fibular ligament. Then to feel the bones of the midfoot coming across, trying to feel them individually across the navicular, um, and then the metatarsal bones coming down, palpating along the length again of each of them in turn until we get to the toes and we palpate each of the uh, bones of the toes in order and check the movement of those toes. Abnormalities such as claw toes, hammer toes uh, and mallet toes are, are often found and some of those are correctable. If they are correctable, they can usually be managed without surgery. If they're not correctable and causing problems, they may need referral. Coming on to the big toe, the great toe, just relax for me. So on the great toe itself, there may be a bunion or hallux valgus deformity or indeed a degree of hallux rigidus. Uh, the great toe should come up in a line from the first metatarsal to the proximal phalanx of approximately 90 degrees in extension. In flexion, it only goes to 30 degrees or so. At the IPJ, the distal phalanx should flex down to somewhere near 90 degrees or so, but does not come back up further than neutral. That's examining the bones, the soft tissues and the joints of the forefoot, and then working back to the hind foot we need to check on the pronosupination of the midfoot and also check on to the ankle movement uh, itself. To check on the ankle movement itself, if you grab hold of the calcis by the heel, rest the foot on your forearm, this will help you lock the subtalar joint in place, uh, allowing you to check the ankle movement itself. Having done that, you need to check the subtalar movement by locking the ankle joint with your forearm and rotating at the calcis underneath the talus. There should be about five degrees of movement each side from that. If you find that there is some laxity on testing the anterior talofibular ligament and the lateral ligament complex, it is a good idea to, excuse me, perform the anterior draw test. The ankle joint itself, because of the rotation, tends to point slightly outwards. As such, again, if you grab the heel for support, push back on the shin and pull forwards at approximately 15 degrees to a straight line, you will get some increased laxity found in the lateral ligament if there is an issue, which there isn't in this case. Testing for pes planus, one needs to test for the tib post tendon, tibialis posterior, and to do that, if you push the foot down into plantar flexion and varus, and ask the patient to maintain that position as you push against it, you can see the tendon of tib post running down here, and this is nice and firm 
the differentiation between that and tibialis anterior is if you push your foot the other way, the other way, sorry, and pull it up. No, no, pull it up and hold it there. As I, as I push down, this is the tibialis anterior uh, tendon in front. We also need to check the vascularity of the foot and do a quick neurological assessment to make sure that sensation is felt in all five of the plantar nerves of the foot. And checking the pulses to ensure that there is a good vascular supply. Having done that, if we have not already, we need to check the knee joint and the spine previously mentioned.